open up this sanctuary as a sanctuary of praise. Let's invite his presence into this sanctuary this morning, into our minds, into our hearts. Lord, we couldn't thank you enough, Lord, just for the breath you've given us, Jesus. Oh, God, we couldn't lift our hands high enough, God, to give you all the glory that you deserve, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We give you glory and praise and honor this morning, Jesus. You so deserve it, oh, God. You're so mighty, Jesus. You're so holy, oh God. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for your blood that dripped down on Calvary, oh Jesus. I thank you this morning for the, for the breath you've given me, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for setting me on my way this morning, oh God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for bringing me back into your house again, Jesus. Come on, let's just thank the Lord this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. So that's exactly, if you ever wondered why we were created, that's why. We were created for his glory, to give him praise, to give him honor. Oh, hallelujah. To use our living bodies as sacrifices for him, I offer up a sacrifice of praise to his name, to his throne. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, I'm ready. I'm ready. And as the singers and the musicians come up, there's anything we need today amongst all the the division we have in the world, 
the opinionated division, the racial division we have, if there's anything we need to do, we need to come into this house, into this sanctuary, and we need to get in one mind and one accord. You might have heard people pray that before. Do you understand what that means? That we're intertwined together. We're one body under one spirit. And you know the best way that to do that is to worship the same thing at the same time with one voice in one body. We need to come together in one body this morning, in one mind and in one accord. We need to lift our hands and worship the mighty God that we serve this morning, that brought us here again, that put breath in our bodies, that set us on our way. So why don't you help me this morning? Help me worship this morning in Jesus' name.
praise God. Welcome to the ark today. My goodness is so strong up here, I can barely stand it. So I'm not going to hold back. How about you? I'm just going to give him the glory that's due his mighty name today. Because he got us 25 years into this. We're still alive. We're still alive. Amen. Whew. I don't want to kill this spirit, but I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you something that's going to excite you here this morning. I was looking up the significance of 25 in scriptures. And 25 in the scriptures would be 5 times 5. And the number 5 stands for grace. So 25 is grace upon grace. Think about that. If it were not for his grace, Brother Freeze, where in the world would we be here today? Amen. And another thing that excited me, I got to thinking, aren't there 25 books or chapters in the book of Acts? There's 25 chapters in the book of Acts as well. It's still going on today. He's still filling people with his spirit today. Today can be your upper room experience if you will allow it to be. Amen. We're going to see a victory here this morning. Why don't you close your eyes and worship with us? Oh,
God, it's so great to see everyone here this morning. It is so great to feel the presence of the Lord here today. I won't even get into the evening we had yesterday because it doesn't matter. He is good because we made it here this morning. He is good. Come on, tell somebody close to you in your family. He's good. Yes, he is. Praise God. Amen. Now, we've, we've had a little bit of a shake-up here this morning. Didn't really get a chance to practice with me. So if, if we messed up at all, it was on me, I promise. But I'm telling you, today, we can feel his presence in this sanctuary. It's like he's right here. If you just reach up, he's right there. But he's not going to come all the way down to you sometimes. He expects you to reach to him. So can we do that? Can we forget about the schedule here this morning? And can we lift our hands? And could we fill this house with his praises? Can we speak his name here this morning? Can we lift him up and say, Jesus, have your way in me today. God, I need you. Go ahead and tell him how much you need him this morning. It is... Just tell him how good he is today. Oh, Jesus, I praise you, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. He loves to hear the sound of your voice as you praise him. He loves when you fill the air around you with his praise. Oh, Jesus. Come on, don't be afraid to worship him today. Oh, yes, Lord God. Jesus, the most beautiful name of all days. Don't you love the name of Jesus? Jesus, the only name that brings healing.
with us this morning. Don't let your worship die here today. Oh, Jesus, I worship you. Praise God. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Great. 
is here this morning. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise God. Why don't you turn to somebody and welcome them yourself here today. We're about to take up an offering here this morning. We want to give God what belongs to him, some of what belongs to us, because I could never pay him enough. I could never thank him enough. It is so great to have, let me put these back on, Lord help me. Michael, it is so good to have you here with us today. Friend of Elvie, thank you for coming. Please don't feel called out or anything like that. We love our guests here at the Ark. We really do. And if you feel like you came into a room full of perfect people, bless your heart. Because we're a hot mess. Most every one of us have already been through you know what and back. We're not perfect people, but He is. We serve a perfect God. Amen? Amen. It's so good to have Mike and Katie Norris here this morning. Amen. Good to have you today. I, I notice you live in Somerton on Quackenbush. I'm familiar. You can be seated if you would like. Yes, please. You know, a lot of people think you have to stand the whole time in a Pentecostal church, and you really don't. <laughs> it is so good to see Mr. Charlie Hill today, and Edwin, and Johnny, and Lucinda. So great to see your smiling faces here this morning. And if I have not gotten a guest card on anyone else, I'm just thrilled to have you here today. It's good to see Greg Burns here with us today. Amen. He's going to be getting baptized in just a little bit. Amen. Yes. And Miss Annabelle's going to be getting baptized today. All right. She is so excited. Amen. Praise God. But I wonder if we could get um, maybe... Brother James, if you wouldn't mind praying over this offering here this morning. I'm so thankful for this man and I'm so thankful for the walk that he has with the Lord. Amen.
seated. How many of you love the Lord this morning? I tell you what, we're blessed to be alive. Isn't that the truth? Blessed to be alive. I love Brother Johnny and all of you guys back there. Man, we go way back, don't we? You remember us drinking them cold iced teas? I had to quit drinking them too. They was too sweet. <laughs> you know, you never know what kind of journey the Lord's going to take you on. And yesterday afternoon about 3 o'clock, uh, I started having problems. And, uh, and I said, you know what? This feels like a kidney stone. And I said, maybe it's not. You know, because I've had one before, and I knew him they're murder, man. So I finally stood it till about 11 o'clock last night, and I just gave up and went on to the hospital. I said, I got to go get something. I got to get some relief. I don't know what's going on. But, you know, I, I kept asking the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, we've, we've got anniversary service in the morning. I said, we've got guests. We've got all this stuff going on. You know, why now? You know, so uh, when I finally did get bad in the back back there about three hours later, uh, that's the truth, I spent more time witnessing to the doctor than he did talking to me. You know, one of the things he, was, he said was this, was there's just so many beliefs and stuff everywhere. He said... He said, we've got to get back to just being true to the word. He said, I've been looking for somewhere that's true to the word. That's what he said. So I worked on him for a, probably a good 30 minutes in there. And then the, love, the, the sweet nurse that was working with me, I knew her too. And uh, everybody knows everybody in Manning, the good and the bad, you know. And uh, so I got to talk to her, too, about the Lord. And so then I knew why. I said, now I know why I'm here. So uh, I'm a little, I, I don't mind telling you, I didn't get out of there at about 5 o'clock this morning, and they gave me some kind of shout of something. Okay. And, and uh, I'm kind of seeing double out across through there right now. Elvie, you look, you look like, I said, yeah, you look, you look all right, Elvie. But uh, I love all of you. I appreciate you. We've got the, the other set of freezers with us here today. These are some good people. They've been in church all, all their lives, as far as I know. Granddaddy was a preacher. And uh, they've come many, many miles in this thing. And I respect them a whole lot. I really do. Uh, Elder Brother Freeze is here. And, you know, he was real bad sick a while back and it's it's really a miracle he made it back I, i'm serious i think one time they said the the tube or whatever they had or you were breathing got clogged up and nobody knew it and he was literally smothering to death and, and like to die because of just this tube getting stopped up so you man, I'm gonna tell you, you just don't ever know. You know, there's a lot of people gone today that was here yesterday. But uh, I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. How about the rest of you? Everybody got your Bible? Amen. I see Big Joe back there. I love you, Big Joe. I'm feeling good. Amen. Boy, I tell you what. Let's all stand back to our feet. Oh, Brother Freeze, make your way on up here. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to bless him. I know we're going to hear from the Lord. There's no, no two ways about it. Let's, let's pray and ask God to touch him and speak to our hearts today. 25 years of being in Manning, South Carolina. What a celebration. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for every day that you've given us, Lord. We've gathered here in your house one more time, Lord. You've been so gracious to grant us another day, Lord, to come and worship you and lift our hands and praise your name. 
We just ask you to anoint the lips of clay. Speak to us, Lord, in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. And everybody said amen. Praise the Lord, church. Now, come on. I know you can do better than that. Let's try that again. Praise the Lord, church. There we go. Oh, my God, I feel the, the glory of God in this house today. I don't know about you, but I, I didn't come down here to preach to a dead church. be careful. Thank you, Pastor Gleason, First Lady Gleason, for the opportunity to come to preach your 25th year anniversary here at the Ark in Manning, South Carolina. I do appreciate the invite, and I am overwhelmed that you uh, thought enough of me to invite me to come preach your anniversary service. Um, I, I will tell you it means the world to me. You both mean the world to me and my family. And we love y'all tremendously. And the, you, you all have a great pastor and pastor's wife here at the Ark. You are truly blessed here. And uh, I say that because we're living in a day and a time, a society where pastors are dropping right and left. I see it every day in the news. I see it all around the world. People who once thought they were called have now just thrown in the towel and said, I'm willing to give it all away now because it doesn't matter. And so when you've got a man and woman of God willing to stick for 25 years, that says something about the faithfulness of God. And I can say that because I've only been pastoring for six years. And so I know the struggles that they go through. And listen, it's going to be God if I make it 25 years. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Some days are harder than others. But it truly is. It truly is a blessing to have a man and woman of God willing to stick it out through thick and thin and understand that God has called them. And so they're not just going to walk away and they're not just going to throw in the towel, but they're going to stick it out. Amen. 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 We, uh, we, we got down here Friday night or Friday evening and was able to go eat with the, the Gleason clan and my family. And we were blessed to be able to sit with Pastor Gleason and First Lady Gleason and Seth and Hannah. And uh, we had great fellowship. And then yesterday we drove all over the countryside and back and then we ended up in Florence to eat dinner and, and met Seth and Hannah and, and Danny and Haley and um, we had the opportunity to sit with Danny and Haley last night and fellowship with them and so we've had a great weekend and we've had a good time um, being being here with you all and uh, obviously it's always good to be with family, my brother and, and my sister-in-law and uh, and my parents drove down with us and so we're, we're glad that everyone is here Thank you all for being here. Great crowd today. Thank you all for being here to celebrate your pastor and your first lady on their 25th anniversary as God has blessed them. And uh, pastor was, your pastor was sharing with me Friday night just the Lord's blessings and many things that God is doing here in the city of Manning, and I am excited. I get excited every time that I see. I know even within the last few weeks, I've seen y'all baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the work of the Lord and all that the Lord is doing here in Manning, South Carolina at the Ark. So, Pastor First Lady Gleason, I say congratulations to you on 25 years and uh, what you have accomplished here. Uh, listen, it, it takes a lot for someone to leave their comfort zone, to go to a city that they've never been to because God called them, and to begin to start a church from nothing. 
and look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. So congratulations to you, Pastor Gleason, First Lady Gleason, on what you have done here through the work of the Lord and all that God has blessed you with here today. I'm going, I'm going to try not to keep you very... That's what I tell my church. Hopefully you believe me. <laughs> I, I told my family yesterday as we were riding, I said, just bear with me because most of the time when I've preached out I've always preached something that I've preached in my church already and that I feel like the Lord has wanted me to speak to another church but this time is not the case I've never preached this message before in my life but I do believe it's a word from the Lord for this church and depending on how it goes I may preach it at my church next week <laughs> So any of my LRC family, if you're watching, go ahead and turn it off because you may get it again next week. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your worship. My, there's such a sweet presence of the Lord in this house today. I felt it as I began to pray and walk the altar. I could feel the very Shekinah glory beginning to rest down upon this house. everything that's within me that God wants to do something miraculous in this house if you have a need in your life today I wonder if you could just lift your hand you don't have to let anybody know what it is but you just say look my God look at all the needs all over this place if you just lift your hand and say God I've got a need today that I need you to take care of For you that, my God, I, some of y'all feeling what I'm feeling right now. And for you that have raised your hand and said, I've got a need. Listen, you better get ready because God's getting ready to perform a miracle in your life. I feel the miracle working hand of God flowing in this house right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Are you ready for the Word of God? You can stay there, you can play, you can go down, you can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter to me. We'll stay. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 4. And I will begin reading at verse number 19. 1 Samuel 4 and verse number 19. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, they've got it on the screen. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas's wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed. Somebody say she travailed. For her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel. Because the ark of God was taken, and because her father-in-law and her husband. Mm. Verse 22, and she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. If you allow me to just for a few moments today, I want to preach to you just from this thought. Don't name it Ichabod. Don't name it Ichabod. God, I thank you for your word. 
I thank you for your precious people that are in this house today. God, I am praying that as this word is delivered, that it would find good ground. Open the hearts of every believer in this house. Open their minds and their ears to receive what thus saith the Lord God Almighty. God, we are believing for the miraculous. We are believing for the supernatural. Gifts of the Spirit begin to operate freely in this house today. Release, God, those that are in bondage. Release those that are being held captive. God, we are believing for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Have your way and let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, look to your neighbor and tell him, don't name it Ichabod. Don't name it Ichabod. Now, sometimes it takes me a minute to get warmed up, but not today. I'm going to jump right in there, so you better hang on. You with me today? You see, we see that the glory had departed from Israel because of their lack of obedience to God and because they had become a superstitious and an idolatrous nation. And I know that we do things in our lives and we do things in our services to give God glory in what we do. But, but what I love about God is that he reciprocates and gives glory back to his people more than what we could ever give to him. Because what we've got to know today, what we've got to understand is that God has always intended for man to be in his presence and to be in his glory. From the beginning of time, in the Garden of Eden, we find that God visited with Adam and Eve in the coolness of the day. But because of sin, the Bible says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Somebody say everybody. Sin has caused the glory of God to depart from man and to depart from the church because what we must realize is that the glory of God is not going to dwell in the same place where sin abides. Hang with me. And so we look at the history of what was going on. The children of Israel were at war with the Philistines. And during this first encounter, the Philistines killed 4,000 Israelites. And they asked themselves, why has the Lord allowed us to be defeated today? And so someone come up with a bright idea that we need to bring the Ark of the Covenant into battle with us. Now let's take a moment to look at the Ark of the Covenant. Notice that the Ark of the Covenant was a beautiful symbol of God's presence and His glory. Notice that the Ark of the Covenant was made out of the hardest wood that was made. It was made out of shittim wood and it was overlaid with gold. And this was a, a, a typology of Christ in the Old Testament. Now the Ark of the Covenant was covered by what we know as the mercy seat, which emphasized the power and the purpose of Christ. And if you were to notice the mercy seat, it was a plate of pure gold. It was not a piece of wood. And on the mercy seat, there were two cherubim, or that was two angels that would sit facing one another. So it was believed that the mercy seat was the very throne of God. And so the ark was so full of God's glory that it could not be touched by human hands. And when they transported the ark, it had to be carried with poles on either side. Hang with me. It said that the ark was so powerful, even that in, I didn't give him this verse, but in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse number 7, when Uzzah touched the ark, because the Bible says it was unsteady, that he fell over dead. <laughs> you know why? 
because the glory of God cannot be handled just in any way. Now inside of the Ark of the Covenant, there were three items, the Bible says. The tablets of stone that were engraved with the Ten Commandments. The manna that had fallen down from heaven. And Aaron's rod that had budded. Now the Ark of the Covenant was placed in the innermost room of the temple. The Bible refers to it as the Holy of Holies. And once a year, the high priest could enter beyond the veil to sprinkle blood on the mercy seat for the atonement of sin. But now, because of the blood of Jesus... Because of the blood of Jesus, the Bible says that the veil was ripped from top to the bottom. Oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes away all of our sins. Oh, the blood of Jesus, it redeems me from anything that's held me captive. Oh, the blood of Jesus. In fact, it's because of the blood of Jesus that we no longer have to worship in the outer courts. Now every time we enter into the house of God, we can lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting and move in to the heart. Let me try this side. We can move in to the Holy of Holies where the very Shekinah of glory. Whoo, I feel, I feel the glory moving in this house. Let me get back to the story. I got to be careful. I'll be chasing rabbits here. So like I said, during the battle... Someone come up with this bright idea that we should take the Ark of the Covenant into battle with us. First of all, God did not tell them to take the Ark of the Covenant into battle with them. What they really needed to know was that their safety was not in the Ark of the Covenant, but their safety was in the Lord of the Ark. See, the act that they took the Ark of the Covenant into battle shows how superstitious that they had become. And that's the way we have become around some of our churches. Our safety is not in the house of the Lord, but instead our safety is in the Lord of the house. I pull my coat off. Thank you, sir. (laughs) I'm going to leave my pants on. That's the way we have become in some of our churches. Our safety is not in the house of the Lord, but our safety is in the Lord of the house. See, the Ark of the Covenant is a symbol of God's glory and His presence. Listen, God cannot be put into a box that you can just bring along and tag along with you like a good luck charm to fight and win your battles. You know, some of y'all keep a rabbit's foot in your pocket. When you feel like things are going wrong, you pull it out and you begin to rub that rabbit's foot. Hoping that it's good. You can't treat God like a rabbit's foot. You can't treat God like a good luck charm. 
You can't expect God to jump in and fight for you and win your battles when you're keeping him in a box. And the problem is just as the children of Israel did back then, we're still trying to do today. We're trying to keep God in a box. See, the children of Israel thought that the success was in the box. The Ark of the Covenant. They thought the power was in the box. They thought the deliverance was in the box. Just as we do today, we try to carry God around and let him out of the box when we want. Notice I said when we want something. We like to shout when we're playing our favorite song. Everything's going good. Oh, we, we like to say amen when the preacher's preaching something we like. We get happy when everything's going right in our life. We put our faith and our trust in stuff that we surround ourselves with. Listen, the house of, I'm going to preface this, the house of God is vitally important. That's why the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Pastor, if I step over the line, you go ahead and reel me back in. You can't stay home and have house church. I told my church this a couple weeks ago. Virtual church is all right. And we did it for as long as we had to do it. But it's no substitute for coming to the house of God. Y'all can do what you want, but I refuse to have virtual church. We need one another. We've got to have the church body. And it, I'm going to try not to get myself in trouble. If you ain't coming to church regularly, there's a good chance you ain't going to make it to heaven. But listen, <laughs> the building is not the church. We, the people, are the church. This is where the rubber meets the road. The church building represents God. But when the glory of God has left the building, then the church is no longer a place of deliverance. The church is no longer a place of healing. The church is no longer a place of miracles and breakthroughs. It simply becomes a place to go for entertainment. Y'all can sit there and look at me if you want to. I'm used to it. I got people in my church that look at me like this too. When God has left the building, then the building becomes a place for social gatherings. It becomes a place of disobedience. It becomes a, a social club where we pass out hugs and we give out kisses. Going to church becomes more of a religious activity because some people don't know anything else to do on a Sunday. In today's society, in church in general, we are simply not putting anything into our worship. And if we don't put anything in, then we surely won't get anything out. No deposit, no return. I'm about to preach now. Don't let the praise team get up here and try to lead everybody in worship while you just stare at them. Some of y'all like to look at your watch trying to figure out how much longer we got. I 
I don't know about you, but I need the glory of God in my life. I don't know about you, but I need the very Shekinah glory to begin to rest down in my life. I can't make it without him. I can't move without him. I can't breathe without him. He is my very being. See, when we don't put anything into the service, there is going to be no manifestation without participation. Some people want particip- oh my God. Some people want the manifestation of the glory of God without ever lifting their hands. Some people want the manifestation of God without ever Sometimes you've got to do something for yourself before God's presence and His glory will begin to move and manifest in the house of God. You ready? There are too many people in today's churches that are just spectators and not participators. Oh, Jesus, help me right now. Listen, I can remember as a kid having blowout church services. People so drunk on the Holy Ghost, they'd be what I used to call washing the walls. They couldn't stand. All they could do is stagger under the presence of God. Um, It used to be nothing to see somebody dance before the Lord and shout their praises unto God. It used to be nothing to see somebody get out of their seat and run around the church. But now we're living in a day and time where we can't do that, preacher. We want the glory of God, but we can't participate in any of that kind of stuff. There's too many people that are spectating and not participating. You ready? People who are satisfied don't worship and praise God. I can look at just about anybody and tell whether they're satisfied or not. Because if you're satisfied, you're sitting there like a bump on a log. If you're satisfied, nothing's going to move you. But when you're not satisfied, when you're not satisfied, something begins to stir on the inside. Something begins to move. And you... His head is like a fire shut up in my bones. I can't contain it. I can't reserve it. But I gotta let it out. That's why you see me worshiping when the praise team's singing. Because I know it's not about them. It's not about you. But in that moment, it's me and Jesus. In that moment, I've got to get a hold of God Almighty in my life. Let me tell you somebody, coming to church is not enough. You say, well, preacher, I come to every worship service, so what? Preacher, I pay my tithe and my offering. So what? I'm here to tell you that God is looking for more from you. Hey, people of the ark, I've come to tell you it's not enough to come to church and sit on the sideline. It's not enough to come and sit on your seat service after service. And expect to be fed. God is looking for some people that will rise up and say, I'm tired of sitting on the sideline.
God is looking for more for you. God is saying to you today that I'm tired of your old sacrifices. God is saying that I want you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. <laughs> One that is holy. See, you've got to come and go beyond just coming to church and learn how to get into the very glory and the presence of God. I don't even know what time I started. Y'all just bear with me. See, we have to learn that, the, that glory is an adjective and glory is a verb at the same time. Glory as an adjective describes one of God's attributes, meaning powerful, majestic, and greatness. But glory as a verb is used to describe what we give God. We give glory to God through our praises, by shouting, by lifting our voices, by dancing before the Lord. Let me try to help you for a moment. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Well, I've got some of you resurrected. I'm going to try to resurrect the rest of the dead people. The prophet Jeremiah said that we put more faith and trust in the temple of the Lord instead of the Lord of the temple. It's sad to me to say that there are many churches in today's society that have lost the glory. Not here. I feel the glory of God in this place. But I'm just trying to help you today. I think that I need to tell the saints of the Most High God that in these last days that we're living, anybody believe we're living in the last days? Well, I got a three of you. Thank you very much. I said, does anybody believe we're living in the last days? As we live in these last days, we need the glory of God now more than ever. You ready? If you want to bring revival to this city of Manning, if you want to bring revival to this church, then keep on in the glory of God. Because the glory of God is needed in the realm of the church. But we're living in a day and time where the glory is not in many churches and people are okay with that. You know why? Because they're living with God in a box and they're satisfied with where they want to be. People will go to church and not feel anything. When the glory of God has left the church, people will leave out the same way they came in. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Because when they leave, they've got the same attitude that they came in with. When they leave, they've got the same demeanor that they came in with. When they leave, their lives have not been moved or changed. They are still the same exact person as when they came in. That's why people can come to church today and nothing's happening. Listen, I'm tired of Pentecostal churches being the smallest churches in the city.
See, the problem is that people are going to church today and nobody's getting delivered. People are coming to church today and nobody's getting healed. People are coming to church today and nobody's getting set free. Nobody's having their financial needs met. There's no prayers being answered. No cries are being heard. No tears are being wiped away. People coming to church and nobody is being filled with the Holy Ghost. There's absolutely nothing happening. If you show me a church where you don't see the glory of God in it, then I'll show you a church that's dead. I'll show you a church that does not give God the glory and the praise that He deserves. If you show me a church where you don't see the glory of God, then I'll show you a quiet church. I'm trying, y'all. One that doesn't lift up holy hands, one that does not shout, one that does not lift up their voice, Yes, people are still having church, but people are coming and they're leaving out the same way that they came in. But I believe today that I'm looking at a church in the ark that has decided that we need the glory of God every time we come together. Let me get to the meat of this message. I know in today's time, we name our children after relatives. I was named after my father. I named my boys after me. We all have the same name somewhere in there. And I know my boys hate it, but that's all right. But when Phineas' wife learned that the grandfather Eli had died... She did not name the baby after him. And when she found out that her husband Phineas had died, she didn't name the child after him. But when she learned that the Ark of the Covenant was taken, it seemed to be more painful and troubling to her than anything else. Because the Bible says that she travailed and named the child Ichabod. Which means the glory has departed. Hang with me. It's sad to me today that many churches today have gotten into this Ichabod spirit. Listen, sometimes we may even feel like an Ichabod. We all have these Ichabod experiences. There are churches that have Ichabod Sunday schools. There there are churches that have Ichabod Bible study on Wednesday night. There are churches that have Ichabod worship on Sundays. There are churches that are being led by Ichabod people. There are churches that have Ichabod worship teams trying to lead them into the glory of God, thinking they don't have to rehearse, thinking they don't have to practice, and then they can show up on Sunday, but then wonder why there's no glory in the house. They wonder why there's no power in the house of God. They wonder why there's no anointing in the house of God. There's churches with Ichabod ushers. There's churches with Ichabod youth. They speak Ichabod prayers. They even have Ichabod preachers. But the fact of the matter is that every time we come together, we should give God our best praise and our best worship. Listen, I ain't trying to hurt your feelings today. 
but we might be going through some things in our life right now. But that's all right. I'm still going to praise him. I might have some problems right now, but I'm still going to praise him. I might be going through some dire situations right now, but I am determined that I am going to praise him. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. You see, Israel worship the Ark of the Covenant and not God Himself. The problem is that you and I are putting more faith in our rituals and our methods than we do in God. I'm guilty. I'm preaching to me right now. I've been a pastor not 25 years, but just six measly years. And there's times I'll meet with my ministry staff and I'm like, what can we do? What can we do? How can we do this? How can we do this better? And that's all well and good. We've got to have that. But sometimes we just got to step out of the way. Say, all right, God. I can't do it anymore. God, I need your glory to rest down on this house. In other words, God is saying that these people honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Listen, I know that we've had this global pandemic going on. Anybody tired of COVID? My God, I got more amens there than I have the entire time I preached. I'm double tired of it. People have lost their jobs. People have lost their homes. They've lost their their cars. Churches are still not back to normal. But God is saying, listen to me right now, people of art. God is saying right now, don't lose the glory. You ready? They can give you a pink slip at work. They can give you a layoff notice. They can foreclose on your house. They can repossess your car. But but what they can't do is foreclose on your worship. What they can't do is repossess your praise. I don't know about you, but I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel something shifting in this place. You can't let anything separate you from the love and the glory of God. Paul Paul asked the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Where you at? Shout distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. For I am persuaded. Some of y'all need to get a persuasion in your spirit. Paul said, I am persuaded that neither life or death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nothing shall separate me. In other words, what Paul was saying, I'm not going to let this pandemic... I'm not going to let no recession. I'm not going to let any depression, no fear, no doubt, no worry, no anxiety. I don't care how crazy things may get. 
I will not let anything separate me from the love and the glory of God. What are you trying to say, preacher? I know it may be tough right now in your life, but hold on to the glory. I know the winds and the storms may come, but hold on to the glory. Adversity may come, but hang on to the glory. Anybody battling sickness here today? Come on, be honest with yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About ten or twelve people. Guess what? In the midst of your sickness, hang on to the glory. Hey, for those of you that are sick, we're going to pray for you at the end of this message. And I'm believing God is going to heal you right now. Come on, that's the kind of glory I feel in this place right now. In the midst of your struggle, don't lose the glory. There are churches that are known by how many dinners they can sell. There are some churches that are known by how many members they have. There are some churches that are known by their choirs and their praise teams and how well they can sing. Some churches are known by how well they raise money and do fundraisers. But I want to be a part of a church that is known for the glory. I want people when they talk about our churches to say, hey, they may not have it all together over there, but there's the glory of the Lord. I want to be where the praises go up, the glory comes down. <laughs> I want to be a part of a church where the very Shekinah glory rests down upon that place. Well, someone may be asking today, well, how do I hang on to the glory? You can hang on to the glory by simply just lifting your hands. You can hang on to the glory by simply just lifting your voice. You can hang on to the glory by just shouting, maybe dance before the Lord. Come on, it's all biblical. The Bible says David danced before the Lord. You ain't got to have the two step or the three or four step all down. Just move your feet. It may be the ugliest dance you've ever seen or anybody's ever seen, but it don't matter because it's not about them. It's unto the Lord. I had somebody tell me one time, they said, well, you just shout cool. I said, I ain't trying to impress nobody. It's to God. It don't matter how bad it looks. I'm just offering up a praise unto God. I'm telling you that when the praises and the worship goes up, God's glory comes down. I want to see the glory of God in our churches. God's not coming back for a lukewarm church. But He's coming back for a church full of His glory. Let the fire of God fall down on us. You see, listen, when you let the glory of God into your life, you'll get a case of the I can't help it. Yeah. 
Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't. Some of you just went over your head. Somebody look at me funny and you just say, I can't help it. He's been too good to me. I can't help it. He saved me from a life of sin. I can't help it. He made a way where there was no way. I just can't help it. He performed a miracle in my life. I just can't help it. And when you get a case of I can't help it, it'll make you want to shout. Listen, not just in church where everybody can see you. Sometimes you got to be right in the middle of your living room. Sometimes you got to go to your bedroom and shut the door where it's just you and God and say, all right, God, this, this is unto you. Is this all right? Sometimes you'll be in your car just driving. Anybody ever had that happen to you? A song come on and, my God, you feel the glory of God enter into your car. And you want to throw that thing in park and get out and just run around your car. I've been there. Because when you think of the goodness of Jesus, something just comes over you and you can't help but shout. You can't help but lift your voice. Let me just tell you this. You want to know why some churches don't see the glory of God? It's because the people of the church don't allow the glory of God to come into their homes and lives outside of church. Because what you don't practice at home overflows into the... See, God created the family before He created the church. And so what you don't do in your family, you're not going to do in church. But when you do in your family, and you get to church, that's just the icing on the cake. I, I'm, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't have a clue what I'm talking about right now. Because when we begin to allow the glory of God to come into our lives at any given moment then we'll begin to see the glory of God coming to the church. You won't have to look back and wonder how you made it through your situation. Because you'll know without a shadow of a doubt that it was all God. When the glory comes in, I'm about to hurt somebody's feelings. When the glory comes in, you won't have to wait for a preacher to come lay hands on you. Some of y'all feel like if your pastor don't lay hands on you, ain't been prayed over. I tell you, get into the glory of God and lay hands on yourself. on your fingers wipe it on your forehead you can even shake yourself if you want to when you get in the glory of God you won't have to wait for someone to encourage you you can encourage yourself like David did the glory of God comes into your life you won't have to wait for someone to speak a word into your life when the glory of God comes in you won't have to wait for someone to prophesy over you the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and 
not faint. This is what I love about Jesus. If you look throughout the scripture, everywhere that Jesus went and worked throughout the Bible as he was on this earth, he performed a miracle. He ran into blind people. And miraculously, they could see. He ran into deaf people, and they got their hearing back. He ran into dumb, and they got their speech back. He even ran into dead people, and they got up out of the grave. See, Jesus went to an old rugged cross. He shed his precious blood. He was placed in a borrowed tomb, the Bible says. But on the third day, Jesus got up with all power and all authority. Somebody shout glory. We've got to let the glory of God rise among us. Why don't we set the atmosphere for the glory of God to be ushered in? Anybody need God to speak into your life right now? A few of you, that's all right. I don't know about you, but I need God to speak into my life. Speak into my situation. Speak into my finances. Speak my healing. Speak until the yokes of bondage are destroyed. Speak until the captives have been set free. I don't know who you are today. I don't know what you're experiencing. But I've come to tell you that you don't have to leave the same way you came in. When the glory of God is in the church, everyone in the building, even everyone watching via live stream, can still feel the glory. Because the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty the glory of God now I want to show you something I'm trying to land this plane three chapters later from what we read in 1 Samuel chapter 4 keep playing Three, just three chapters later, go to 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. Watch this. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve Him only, and He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines, the people they were fighting. Next verse. Oh, that, that was verse 4. I'm sorry. So the Israelites put away their idols and they went back to serving the Lord. You with me? Now watch this, verses 5 through 11. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said... And said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, offering worship that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto 
the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Then, well, I'm going to stop right there, verse 11. So now we find the Israelites asking Samuel to keep praying for them. Keep praying for us. Keep pouring your heart out. And as Samuel makes a sacrifice and he keeps praying, the Israelites begin to pursue the Philistines and they slaughter them. You ready? Watch this. Verses 12 and 13. This is so awesome. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer. saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. My God, I feel the glory. So to remember this event... Samuel sets up a stone memorial and he calls it Ebenezer. You got to get this. Ebenezer simply means the Lord helped us. It was to simply remember that they needed the assistance of God. If you don't get anything else out of this message, I, listen, I need you to pay attention right here, right now. If you don't get anything else, I need you to hear this. The nation of Israel moved from a spirit of Ichabod. The glory has departed. And they moved to a spirit of Ebenezer. The Lord hath helped us. He cotorra ye mosete la la maca. He ala la la mohromo cosete yamacaye. The question today, right now, right here. What are you willing to do right now? Will you live outside of the glory of God content? Or will you do whatever it takes to get into the glory of God? I'm closing. This portion of scripture tells a story of one of great Israel's greatest defeats. Phineas, his wife, gives birth to a child. And she didn't name him Eli after his grandfather. She didn't name him Phineas after his father. But she names him Ichabod. Simply because the glory had departed. But the, but the problem is, three chapters later, the glory came back. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. He was given a permanent name, Ichabod, in a temporary season. was given a permanent name I'm going to call you Ichabod because the glory has departed not realizing that his permanent name would be with him for the rest of his life and three chapters later the glory comes back
And in that moment, it's too late. Your name is now Ichabod. The glory has departed. I've come to tell someone in this house today, whatever you're going through is only a temporary season. Don't you dare name it Ichabod. Anybody else feel what I'm feeling right now? Don't you dare name your marriage Ichabod. It's not over. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Don't you dare name your finances Ichabod. Don't you name your ministry Ichabod. Don't name your job or your dreams or your future or don't name anything else Ichabod because what you're going through is only temporary the glory the glory is coming back the glory is coming back I wish some of you would get in your spirit right now that I refuse to name my situation Ichabod. Come on. Some of you trying to name your sickness Ichabod. Listen, if you name it Ichabod, it may stick with you for the rest of your life. You need to get a spirit of Ebenezer in your life. The spirit of Ebenezer says the Lord is my help. The glory is coming back. Listen, listen to me carefully. The Lord is saying to you today, the people of God, hear me. Tell the people to be careful naming things Ichabod in this season because this is only temporary hear me I can I flow in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes Pastor Gleason, First Lady Gleason, can I speak into your life? I know the last five or six months, seven months have been tough. But I'm telling you, hang on. Don't name this season Ichabod. Because the glory is still here. Listen, you're my elder and I respect you with everything in me but I want to speak from God into your life right now. People have left this church and people have turned their back on you and your family and you've poured into them countless times over and over again.